I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, Mr. Michael Van Tool is a fantastic individual, very good friend of mine. He's also on the board of Agents of Hope. He's also the treasurer, the president and founder of Michigan Ocean Strategy Group. He's done fantastic things. He's also a poet. You should hear his poetry. I believe you have an event coming up here at COLA, April 19th, and he will be sharing some of his beautiful poetry. Uh, with us. So please, a round of applause for Mr. Vantil. Thank you. Thank you, Shola. Um, did you, wait, did you say that your master plan is, is in the bedroom, your bedroom? Could, could it be out in the hallway or something? I just, I, I don't know if you all caught that. Well, you just have to fax it to me. <laughs> Hi, my name is Michael Van Tool. I am owner of Michigan Ocean Strategy Group. It's a business, political, and media relations business, uh, three years old. But I, I, now I look, I say served, like I served time. I served 20 years at Comerica and 12 at Flagstar before I decided to go out on my own. I wish I would have done it a long time ago. But... Um, but I'm also a host of the Michael Van Tool Show on WCHB every Sunday at 5 o'clock, also co-host of Community Highlights, also on WCHB. Um, I see we are being videotaped tonight, but we are also on uh, an Internet show called National Detroit Weekly, where they've been chiming in and out uh, this evening also. So I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you're here. Okay, tonight... Uh, Welcome to Business 101, students. I'm your instructor. And uh, in this class, you can talk, you can write, you can uh, get on your, your cell phones and all that stuff. But I'm, I found out during the, my last three years, and even in banking, that there's a lot of people that want information from the very beginning. I'm not talking, I mean, I could tell you the technical stuff about getting your business started. I'm talking about the idea, starting back on getting an idea to start your business. Um, first of all, you have to decide why do you want to start it. And, and maybe there may be somebody here tonight that wants to start their business based on uh, what you hear tonight, because this is the very beginning. And, and I don't think you hear too much about starting it from the very beginning. And I'm talking about from when you first decide that you think you want to own your own business. What are you going to do? But think about the obstacles too first, okay? The hard work, the little early rewards, because you won't get too many to begin with in many cases. Um, there may be failure. I'm just covering the stuff, the real reality, okay? Uh, it's going to take a lot of time each day. Uh, it's going to cost a lot of money to start in, ma in most cases, like a franchise. Um, it's going to take a long time before you break even in many cases. Uh, and you've got to think about the economy uh, and the impact on what you're doing. Uh, I'm saying this because you hear about all the good stuff about you're the boss, you have the freedom, you make a lot of money, the money, power, respect, you know that, uh, the authority and the influence. Uh, but there's a lot of other stuff that comes with it, so I'm just trying to, you know, keep you level-headed about what you're getting yourself into, okay? It took me three years before things started to, to level out, okay? Because I, I wasn't used to getting uh, a fat paycheck every two weeks from Comerica and Flagstar, and then when I went into business on my own, uh, it was all on me, you know? And guess what? I can't even take a day off. I'm scared. I, I would love to stay home and watch cable or, or um, you know, just go out to the mall or something like that. But, if, but look, I, I rem you know why I stopped? Twice somebody came, called me. I was home watching a movie, and somebody uh, said, hey, Mike, I'm, I'm at your office. I have a check. <laughs> uh, I want to look at that deal, and uh, I, I couldn't get there in time. So <laughs> I stopped staying home <laughs> so don't it's look it ain't all about that sometimes 
you know, when you're in business for yourself, you got to get up and go. I, I take, I go to work more now than I did at Flagstar when I was at the bank, okay? I can say it now. I took a lot of time off when I was there, and I had some, they called it the Michael Van Tool lunch, because my lunch hour would go like an hour and a half, sometimes two hours. I'm saying this because I, a buddy of mine who lived across the street from me, he cashed out from Stroh's when they closed down downtown Detroit a number of years ago, and he took his settlement, uh, his payout, they got a nice little payout, um, and he opened a Valvoline oil change business. And so, you know, like a good citizen and friend and neighbor, uh, I took my car there to get oil changed. Um, but like every three or four months, I saw he, <laughs> he was the one changing the oil. And I was like, don't you have people that do this stuff? And he said, Mike, I wish I could, but you know, and then he started telling me one guy, they stole tools out of that big $1,000 tool chest that they have. They wheel in there with all, and his, the tools were missing one after another. One guy was drinking. Um, another guy was um, repairing cars <laughs> under the table at his Valvoline oil change. So people would come up there, and he would fix their car, and they would pay him, <laughs> and they would drive off. And the owner wouldn't get anything. So that's the kind of stuff that he was dealing with in business for himself. Uh, obviously, he's out of it now. But those are the issues. And that's why he was the one under, the, under my car, in the pit, uh, changing the oil when he should have been in his office directing the business. I had another friend that ran a, a McDonald's. And um, you know, every time I went there, he was sweeping the floor and cleaning. I'm just letting you know the real deal when you have your own business, you're going to be doing a lot of the work, especially when you first, especially when you first start out. Um, so yes, you can get there, but think about some of the negatives, okay? So remember, we're starting at um, starting your business 101, okay? All right. Now, the next thing is, what are you going to do when you get into business? Uh, my suggestion is... Do something that you know very well and that you're good at. Uh, like if you're a good pharmacist, <laughs> you know, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> but make sure it's something that, you know, if it's a hobby, um, if it's a hobby that you're in, what are your skill sets? What is your job experience? This is all, this is, this is down here, you know. What is your experience? Make sure you know about the business you're entering. And if you don't know, do the research. I'm telling you, you've got to do the research. Research the business that you're going into. You may need a partner. You may need somebody that knows a little bit more. You can do it. You know, one person can do some of the work, the other person, you know, and bring that knowledge and information into the picture. Um, at some point, uh, at some point when you start bringing in other people, um, you, you really need to start looking at an, at an attorney. Uh, for legal advice and things like that, you're going to need insurance coverage. But that, see, that's some of the technical stuff that, that we, you know, down the line. But, and just remember, when you get to a partner, think about it like a, a marriage. Uh, when things go wrong, when there is a split, uh, it can get very destructive. The business, they can blow the business up, let me tell you. Um, assets can be frozen. Charges can be filed. Uh, and you may wish you never went into partner with somebody. So that's some of the things you got to think about. Um, uh, the, the other, it's, and then sometimes you may have a partner that has the money. You, you may have the idea and you have the money, but you still, once again, you still need to get an attorney and to start um, thinking about uh, that, that, you know, union. Because um, sometimes you might not be able to do it without the money, uh, or at least from that particular person. Uh, you might need, but you will need money. <laughs> um, you may need to borrow it from a friend or relative, because um, it's gonna. It may be kind of hard to buy borrow it from a bank at first. I'm, I'm telling you, because I worked at a bank for 32 years, and when you're straight out the gate and there's no history, no business, most banks won't even lend 
unless you've been in business for two to three years, some finance companies, two or three years. So you might be better off with a business partner, a friend, or a relative when it comes to getting money. Look, Donald Trump got a million dollar loan from his dad to get started, okay? So that's the kind of stuff um, that you might need, a relative or a friend. Um, and then when you do decide, um, you make sure you do something that people want to buy from you or the product or service because you want your phones to ring. You, you, know, you want people to need whatever you're selling so that you can make business, so that you can make money. You, you gotta have a, um, a, you know, something that people want. So after uh, research, research, make sure it's a viable business. Uh, will you be located um, at home or will you be at a location, you know, an office or a building? Think about it. In some cases, you may be able to do some things from home and do a business from home, but then there are other businesses that uh, I can tell you they require, um, some of the financial institutions require you to have an actual location uh, because they want to make sure that you're legitimate uh, in, in business. Um, do you have clients? Where, where would you get your clients from? Do you have lists? Uh, how are you going to get your customers? Uh, are you going to make calls? Um, you know, uh, what about, I know this firsthand because I have a lot of stories I know of. A uh, company went out of business and you, uh, somebody got the client list uh, from there. That was like a gift from God. It just fell in their lap, you know. But where are you going to get your clients from? That's, that's, that's important. You can buy lists too. Um, when I first started, I did have uh, some contacts from the bank, but um, I bought some uh, lead lists. Uh, for a few hundred dollars, two or three hundred dollars, you can get uh, a number of leads to start off to make your calls. Um, but, you know, try to be honest and fair when you get your list. There are some companies that, uh, if, you know, if you are released or terminated or you quit, uh, you can't take the list with you. Um, you know, that's a violation of policy. Uh, make sure that your prices are competitive, uh, your product is competitive. What will be your advantage? Why, why are you going to go into business and how can you compete with other people? You know, what, what is it, what's going to stand out for you uh, by being in business? And why would somebody come to you rather than somebody else? Uh, especially if you're new. Um, why would anybody want to hire you? You got to think about that. Okay, now, the name of your company. How do you choose a name? Uh, make it different. Um, make it memorable. Remember Google? That, that's a crazy name, but it worked, didn't it? Uh, Google, I mean, um, make it, you know, make it memorable. For instance, Michigan Ocean Strategy Group. The reason I, that ended up, not by choice, but I, I stuck with it. I started out as Ocean Financial Services. And uh, so when I sent the paperwork in back in 2014, they said, uh, you know, Mike, if you do ocean financial services, there's a lot of um, requirements you need. You need to file a whole bunch of stuff with the uh, um, insurance and bureau and all this kind of stuff, financial affairs area. You need to um, take some classes and all this stuff because you're operating as a bank with a name like Ocean Financial Services, that's a bank. So I, I had to backtrack because um, the only thing I really wanted to do was refer companies to um, commercial lending. That's all I wanted to do. I have about 10 companies that I refer my clients to for commercial lending, and this is second tier. This is, this is what the banks won't do. Then that's all I do. So I didn't want to be a bank, so um, I had to change it from uh, Ocean Financial Services. But by that time, I'd already bought my logo and everything. had a nice picture of the ocean and a wave and stuff like that. And uh, I had put it all over Facebook and uh, was bragging to all my banker friends that I had Ocean Financial Services. So I was like, wow, no, I don't want to cash out that name. You know, um, I put too much into it. And then, but I also had Ferdinand Strategy Group on the side for some public relations stuff. So I ended so I didn't. I kept my logo, and I wanted to keep the ocean name in there. So I ended up making it Michigan Ocean Strategy Group. But you can buy your name too. You can. It, it's costly. 
you can go and buy, there are companies out there that will create a name for you specifically, uh, but they'll charge you for it, like Google. Um, those crazy names that you never heard of before from some of these uh, Fortune 500 companies, they created that name out of thin air. Um, one thing that I like to do, and I've, came, I've come up with some names for, for some of my clients. Uh, one fun thing I like to do is get a, a globe, a map of the world, and I'll just go and find some place on the globe, a, a strange name of some lake or mountain or stream or city or something like that, and I'll pick that name. That's fun, but, but when you do that, um, but they also have clients that can't settle on a name. That is irritating because there's so many options out there when they realize, just open up your mind. You can name your business whatever you want to name, but you got to remember the type of business you have and uh, things like that, and does it really fit? But, um, but you can, uh, you know, be creative on the names. Um, once you do that, make sure that the name is available. And you can go to mich.gov, State of Michigan's official website, um, financial website, Lara. And, uh, but go to mich.gov, and you can do a business entity search to see if the name is available. And then you can secure that name. All right, look, see, look, that, that's just, we haven't even opened up for business yet. And look at the stuff that you have to think about. I'm going to just run through some other things like a business plan. Um, and you're familiar with the plans, uh, a business plan. You've got to be organized. Write a plan out. Um, there's not any correct format, but you've got to do a business plan. Now, you don't need to tell everybody your business either, uh, but just have your own notes, but you, you want to remain competitive and because when you start telling everybody, when you tell you, some of your friends, guess what? All of a sudden, there's another company out there doing exactly what you were going to do, but they're already in business. And, they'll, and, they'll, and that's what happens when you tell your best friends. <laughs> they steal your business ideas. Trust me, they do. I've seen and heard it all in, in 32 years in banking. Um, register your company. Um, and now there are more technical things about it. Uh, you register your company. Uh, there's some tax implications. Um, you're gonna, at some point, then, you're going to need to open your bank account and things like that. And like I said, um, I, the, the technical stuff, I know the technical stuff, but that's what it is. But, you know, with that, that's what you can, that's what you can do just to get out the gate, just to get an idea of what you want to do so that you can get moving. Um, and, of course, I can answer questions at any time.